Hi, everyone. Welcome to our final pitch presentation. My name is Michael Ludis, and I'm here with my team representing our company, Portamask. Here with us today is Josh Bickstrom, Evan Lindquist, Tristan Park, and Al Navarro. Together, we hope to ensure that you never forget your mask again. Picture this. You're the captain of your school's football team. You're already running late to practice, and while you're driving there, you realize you forgot your mask. Now you have to run back home to grab a mask, which forces you to arrive extra late, causing you and your team to run way more, all because you forgot your mask. This is just one example of someone forgetting their mask. But it happens to all of us in many different situations, some of us more severe than others. Due to COVID, masks are part of everyday lives and must be worn in public in every public space. When people forget their mask, they usually can't go where they need to go or have to use a disposable mask. Disposable masks can, are a major problem because it can take up to 500 years to completely decompose, which can pose a threat to wild animals and pollute our planet. Our solution is port mask a stylish mask holder that clips to your car visor that allows you to always keep your mask on you on the go. After conducting several rounds of interviews with fellow high school students, family members, and members of Barrington community back in the fall, we discovered that our problem is mostly consistent with high school students, college students, particularly those that are busy and constantly on the go. These students were ones looking for an easy solution to remember their masks. Likely, they were many people who deal with the same problem. With total addressable market of $130 billion and serviceable addressable market of $72,231,316, PortoMass will be able to reach 100,000 customers in one year with a 8% conversion rate for those years market share of 0.011%. After spending a lot of time researching other options for remembering your mask, we came across other mask holders on Etsy, Amazon, and the Etsy products were similar price to ours, but they were bulky and inconvenient. The Amazon product we found, such as a lanyard for your mask or similar visor product for storing disposable masks were more expensive than Porter masks with prices from $12 to $14 and cheaper materials. Porter masks, on the other hand, is convenient because its slim design also allows you to store your mask while the product itself stays out of sight of, out of the mind. The many different patterns and colors, as well as quality materials, allows your porter mask to match your style. And lastly, porter mask is sanitary because it prevents you from wearing masks off the floor of your car. We plan to market our product through ads, and we intend to use three main social media platforms to do so. We plan to use TikTok, Instagram, and Snapchat. Our ads will be colorful and exciting to draw new customers in. And we plan to feature stories in our ads from product users saying how PortaMask has saved them time and money. We know that these platforms will be useful to the market because 90% of the people we interviewed said they used at least two of these social medias and that on these social medias, they found similar ads to our product. The main channel that our company PortaMask will use to get our product to our customers is our very own website. On our website, customers will be able to read stories about how PortaMask has saved people time and money. And it will also include reviews and overview of our product as well as an order bank. We plan to be very active on social medias in order to generate a customer base and lead people to our website. Since our early adopters, high school and college students, TikTok and Snapchat will be the most effective method of communication with customers as these social media platforms are primarily used by our target customer base. One unit of revenue for our company includes a mask holder that attaches to your visor that we will sell for $9.99 each. We can ensure that this is a price that consumers are willing to pay because the price is competitive with other mass holders sold on Amazon and Etsy. During interviews with product testers, over 80% of them said they would pay $9.99 or more for our product. Our product can also hold other things besides masks, such as cards or sunglasses, which gives our product dual functionality. To produce one unit of Porta mask, there's a materials cost of $3.63 and there's a labor cost of $3.17 with the total production cost of one unit being $6.80 and sales for $9.99, we have a 31.9% gross profit margin. For the first 10 months, we plan on selling 250 units per month, and then for the last two, 350 units. This gives us, a three, this gives us 3,200 units sold in year one. With a constant increase in sales each year, from 109% in year two, 129% in year three, 200 in year four, and 200 in year five, we aim to sell 137 1,840 units in our fifth year. This growth is explained by increasing our market size from just teenager car drivers to drivers all across the world and increasing our product line to offer other items. 
Our revenue for year one is just short of 32,000, but with market and product expansion, we plan to increase revenue to 67,000 in year two, 153,000 in year three, 459,000 in year four, and 1.4 million in year five. Our MVP for port mask was trying to test if our solution was beneficial to our customers and to test that we had the right early adopter. In order to test if our product was successful, we released three rounds of 10 prototypes to our ideal customer market. After two weeks, we interviewed the tester to see what they liked and what they didn't, then adjusted the prototypes and released again. We repeated this several times. This was to test the functionality. And after the first test, we found out that the original capsule design that we first designed was faulted because it was hard to keep the mask inside and was very bulky. However, we learned that most people kept it in their car anyways, so we redesigned the port mask to fit on your car visor. This design was much better taken. After interviews from the third round of testing, we learned that we needed stronger adhesive and nicer materials, which we used in our final prototype that had a very successful design functionality-wise. Alongside the prototypes, we are using a landing page through MVP testing. Our landing page has our backstory, unique value proposition, and a pre-order application, which functions through Foxy.io, which is a company that runs pre-orders for startups. Our landing page was created using the Wix site, and we are promoting that through our Instagram. In order to test our early adopter, we released several rounds of ads on Instagram. We found out that our product was better taken by an older generation, specifically car drivers. Today, we are asking for $17,062 in order to get our company started. We are proposing a 32.6% ownership in our business with this sum of money, and it is based on our company's post money valuation of $52,393. We'll use this money in order to jumpstart Portamask. The money will be used in five ways. The main use of the money is $5,500 will go into six months of starting inventory. $2,976 will go towards production equipment, such as a 3D printer. $750 will go towards our marketing. $6,836 will go towards legal fees, such as an LLC and a patent. And $1,000 will function as a liquidity cushion. The current plan is to achieve an exit for the investors by selling the company at, at the end of five years by financial buyers. Portamask has an IRR of 46.4% and an MM of 5.9x. Thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to our presentation. With Portamask, all your stress and concerns will vanish, along with the worries of being kept out of your favorite places. Portamask protects you and those around you. Thank you, investors. Great. Thank you, guys. That was Portamask, everybody. Uh, why don't we start this round of questioning with uh, Margarita? Okay, um, nice presentation, guys. I've got a very basic question for you. Um, what do you think is the future need? And by future need, I mean within the next two years uh, of face masks. So we've thought about this and we have two options for our company to continue being successful in the future, even after all the mask mandates have been lifted. So number one, um, even after these mask mandates have been lifted, there's always going to be a group of people that will still intend to use their masks just to stay safe if they're high risk. And then number two, our portal mask can also function to hold more than one thing. So it can hold your sunglasses or cards or just things you don't want to keep your car cluttered. So it'll provide a function even past the mask mandates. Okay. So... I'm hearing two things, is you um, think there's going to be an ongoing need for face masks and that another benefit of the Porta mask is actually it's Porta period, it, it, mm -hmm. that it's just a holder on your visor. Okay, yeah. um, some things to consider uh, in terms of uh, pitching to investors. I think you want to make um, investors uh, very much empathize and relate to the problem and solution you're offering. So one thing about masks, um, one of the side benefits of most people wearing masks in this um, past time period is that there was no flu. Hospitals had no flu cases, neither did uh, physicians offices. So a side benefit is not only did it uh, mitigate COVID, um, it also uh, basically stopped in its tracks any diseases or um, that are communicated through the air. So 
just as an example to uh, really demonstrate why there's a benefit beyond this pandemic. Because I think in my brain, I can't wait till this thing goes away. Um, and I don't wanna have to be having packs of masks in my car and everywhere else. So just the thought for the future really draws in um, so that we want to invest in you. Anyone else? Thank you. Yeah, what, so, so you had a couple of different, and I know you had that plastic tube one that you've determined isn't the one you're, you'd want to produce. What, what is the act, what, what does the production of the, of the actual um, Porta mask entail? Um, so I'll pull it up. It was on our, it was the thing that was on the visor. Yeah, the visor, that's our main production product. Okay. And so for equipment, you need uh, a printer. You said a 3D printer? Yeah. Okay. And is there any, are there any other like uh, components to that manufacturing process that, that are heavy equipment? Uh, mainly just um, applying the adhesive. So mainly just the 3D printer. Okay. And then how long would it take to produce a batch of a hundred of these? And is, and is it, if, and I guess where I'm getting at is a big part of, a big chunk of your ask about a third of it is, is six months of inventory. Um, you know, if, it, if there's, if there's a smaller inventory you could build to, you know, make your ask, you know, a bit more efficient, you know, it might be something, you know, that if, that if the, sales come to pass and everything and you're able to procure the inventory, you know, down the road and, you know, achieve the same sales velocity with less starting inventory, that might be something that, you know, that, that changes the ask a bit. I didn't know if the six months was a magic number. Uh, that's just uh, the six months of inventory. That's just the amount of um, that we need to have like on deck ready to sell. Um, we're not exactly sure how much, how long it would take to produce each unit, but we can get back to you with that. Okay. So how are you basing the, that, that on deck amount? Um, so we have our, uh, the price of how much it costs to produce each unit of $6 and 80 cents. So that's just the, um, we have our sales product projections of 250 units per month for the first uh, 10 months of the year. So based on that price and that amount that we need, it would be $5,500. Okay. And then just so um, the product itself, is that a kind of a zipper attached uh, to it as well as some clips that attach to the visor? Is that the structure of it? Uh, yes, it's mainly elastic bands. So um, you put it around like both sides oh. of the visor in order to sure. keep it pressed up against it so it doesn't get in your vision. Okay. Um, I had a quick question. I think you would, I think I, you, I heard you say that uh, while initially kind of you were kind of thinking students, you realized that there was a little bit more interest in an older segment of, uh, I guess, an older population. Uh, is that, was that correct? Did I hear that correctly? Mm -hmm. Did, how are you visioning marketing to that older segment? Um, people like me are on Instagram or, um, you know, don't necessarily are big Facebook users and I'm an older segment. <laughs> Uh, so our, um, for marketing through Instagram, it's also hooked up to Facebook and we do have a port of mass Facebook account, so we could provide advertisement through that. Any other, other ways to try to reach, uh, an older demographic? Well, through our website also. Okay. Carlos, uh, you got your hand up. Yeah, thanks for noticing, Hogs. It's been up for a while, and I, my arm was getting really tired. Make you um, a little bit. Uh, it's, yeah, could, could you guys go to the slide on your TAM? I just would love a little bit more, uh, an initial question and then a follow-up related to what what is, how was the TAM computed? Uh, we used the TSTA, which was a website we were, Hogs introduced us to back in the beginning of the year. And through yep. that, we were able to find the amount of people who are required to wear a mask and in our age range. Okay. And what is the, like, 
what were you multiplying that number of mask wearers by? Um, I am not exactly sure. It was so long ago. I don't remember. I believe two to three purchases in one year and it was on a uh, six to seven dollar uh, per purchase average, I believe. That is, that's the, what people spend on masks? Well, yeah, for disposable mask boxes or a reusable mask type thing. Okay, got it. So um, that number seems a little high, but uh, be, be that as it may, I'm wondering whether you, whether your product or your customer interviews ever drew a distinction or was able, able to find a distinction between customers' willingness to buy your product if they were like dis super disposable, like, you know, super cheap masks versus uh, folks that had uh, nicer cloth masks, more expensive, more like fashionable masks that maybe people wouldn't, maybe they'd, they'd want to make sure to take care of those a lot more than they might take care of the, like the blue surgical mask. Mm -hmm. Sorry, so, so my question just to, to repeat is, were people less willing or more willing rather to buy your product if they had more invested in their mask financially or other? Um, there wasn't much of a difference. The main concern was that people were going through their masks too quickly if they were using disposable masks just because they'd mm -hmm. like fall on the floor of their car and get dirty and stuff like that or mm -hmm. if they have like nicer reusable masks they had trouble keeping track of them and losing them or misplacing mm -hmm. them so mm -hmm. it's mainly just like in order to help people remember it regardless okay. of whatever type of mask they use okay and was there the last last question i promise uh was there ever any angle to your product or customer interviews or marketing that touched on the maybe uh, health benefits, not in the way that Margarita was asking the question, but more like, hey, it's more sanitary to keep your mask in our product as opposed to sitting on your car seat or dangling from the turn signal or in your pocket or, or something like that was was that ever uh, a concern of your customers or discussed? Yeah, for our first prototype, actually, the reason, one main reason we changed it was that it wasn't unsanitary. Like pushing it in a tube, like after putting it in your face, like your face has a lot of bacteria. So you just mm -hmm. be shoving bacteria in a tube, which isn't the best option. And then for our main product, if you have your mask on one side up, it won't be spreading the bacteria as much. And also, the UV light from the sun, it doesn't kill the COVID virus in general, but it does kill most bacteria, helping the sanitariness of our masks, if that makes sense. So the I transparency see. would help a lot in that. Can I ask okay. a follow-up question uh, on the product benefits um, with your customer interviews, as well as your experience in using them? because something that uh, face masks often acquire after you're wearing it for a while, particularly those who w have to wear it for hours because of work, um, it, it uh, collects moisture. So if that's put into your product, how does, the, how does it dry? How, how does the moisture escape? Well, uh, where you insert your uh, mask, there's an open oh, opening, so it's not fully, fully closed. So there is air coming in and coming out. Okay. Margarita, want to give him your last question? <laughs> so, um, team, are you guys in it to win it, or is this an experience for class and you're good with that? Um, we all kind of reached the agreement that this is just an experience for class. Okay. Well, we appreciate your candor. Thank you. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Port of Mask. Thank you, board.